second video um, about the trampoline park demo system. If you haven't seen the first video which goes through all the booking process and the management of those bookings then please see the first video at the bottom um, of this video it's mentioned in the comments. Um, the reason I've got two windows open here is on the left hand side window I'm going to log into the admin area um, and then on the right hand side window we're going to show you how the changes made in the admin area shows up on the actual system. So let's get started. Let's log in to the system as the admin user. Right, so then because we, we've got an admin user in and also in the management roles of the actual system, they get these two extra menu items. Normal normal customers don't get to see those a lot. So we'll click on go into the admin area. Right, in the admin area, it's split into basic settings, opening hours, party hours, special offers. I shall show you, uh, um, and go through each one of these, but I'm going to start off with basic settings. Right, slots per hour. Right, let's just uh, change date. Uh, go back to a normal session. Right, slots per hour, see, that's that number there. So let's try and change slots per hour. Press edit. I'm going to alter that to be 100, press update, and if we go and to here, change date, see how it's changed to 100? That's it, dead easy. So if you've got 100 trampolines available then per hour, then you can just quickly alter it. There, um, right, I'm going to alter it back, so anybody else looking at the video, uh, the first video gets to see it as normal. It's dead easy, look, just update or cancel. Edit, update, cancel. Everything's dead easy in here. Right, max individual per bookings. Right, there, um, this is to stop somebody trying to book out the whole park unintentionally or being a bit rogue and trying to do it. And it, we, we decided to put in a, a limit. So if you didn't want that limit in place, you could just set that to be um, higher than the slots per hour. But um, one of these places where this actually shows up on the screen is in if you go to and book a party. So zero to twenty. But you could make that. Um, I'm having to double click each time because um, the switching windows. That's made that twenty five. Uh, refresh this screen. Uh, back into party and press book 25 so you get the idea it's exactly the same with the pricing so if we look and we try and book here seven pound fifty per standard price and six pound fifty per standard price so I'm gonna make it ten and nine so here we go Ten. And I'll make it nine. Doesn't matter about the decimal places. Right. So let's go and swap that again. Put one of these. Ten and nine look. Like I said, it doesn't matter about the decimal places, only one being there. The system on the everywhere will always format to two decimal places. Um so that so it's dead easy look. It's important to know and if I put in stuff there look, it's all totally not right, it's all doing it all fine. Just move that window there so you can see 10, 9, 19. It's important to know though that um, altering the stuff here doesn't affect anything historical. Um, when um, the users um, have previously booked in the system, um, the, the, the price and everything is all snapshotted at the time of actually doing the booking. So nothing historical is affected by increasing and decreasing your prices. Um, so that's the same for the party price. Minimum party bookings. Um, that is on this screen here. So if I press book, minimum, we can have in a party is 10. I could alter that up. 
Sock price, that's obviously uh, the price of these non-slip socks. Party rooms available, right. Uh, um, this one's a little bit uh, more interesting. Uh, um, at the moment, it's set up, so when you book a party here, if somebody had booked one at five o'clock, there's only one room available, so that will that will knock that uh, room off. So at five o'clock, um, that party room now disappears. Uh, um, but you could have different sites will have different um, party room numbers available. So you, some sites might have five rooms available. So if you had five rooms available, then at five o'clock it would take five bookings for that uh, five, for that party room to be actually used uh, completely because there's five rooms available. So that's all configurable. Um, number of minutes to arrive before bounce time that on the final screen and I think in the email it um, tells you to arrive by if you're booking at five o'clock it would tell you to arrive at 16.40 so, uh, so that's uh, quite quite good and then this one delete unpaid booking after X minutes right each time you go into this actual screen um, and it's querying the database to pull these values out at the same time it's checking to see if somebody's um, partly done a booking but not paid so you can set it to be that if it, after 25 minutes say for example here um, somebody's part done the booking not completed but the slots have been sort of allocated to them after 25 minutes um, on the next sort of click it would then just remove their booking uh, from the actual system. Now if they got part way through and created waivers and stuff and just didn't pay, all the waivers um, exist and they will carry on existing, it's just the actual um, slots. So it's quite it's quite good and quite flexible in what it does. So that's that's all the basic settings. Um, as you can see it's quite easy, it's quite easy to use um, and it's just great. Right, let's go on to opening hours. Right. In the system, you can specify for each um, day of the week um, the open and the close time. So, if we picked a Monday, oh, we've got a Monday on here. Let's have a look then. So, it's not going to show seven and eight, nine o'clock here because we're already on a Monday here, and there, um, I think it's about half past nine. So it doesn't allow you to book in the past. So, uh, so it's showing the next available slot. But let's pick um, a Monday. Look, that's today. Look, let's pick a Monday next week. So it started at nine. Um, that's Sunday. Sorry, had a. Uh, uh, started at um, seven. Look, started at seven, and it will go right through till eight o'clock because the last bounce is. Um, the place shuts at nine, so the last bounce for an hour is at eight o'clock. Now, if I alter those times, when you alter, you get these sliders. So that's nice. So I'm just going to alter it to eight o'clock, and then I'm going to refresh this screen. Let's just save it first. So, so I'm just going to uh, change date. And it should have gone to seven o'clock. There, look. How easy is that? So that works exactly the same because we're shooting at eight. The last bounce is at seven. It's important to know that any pre-existing um, bounces uh, sessions, um, uh, it, this will not affect. So if you've already got somebody booked in at, at nine o'clock, then you need to uh, just double check it. Uh, and perhaps contact them or stay open but what we do is is you can set the system so that you can accept bookings for so many days in advance so it, you can you can set it up to be 90 days or uh, three three months or what, or however many you want 60 days so you can always uh, um, uh, work around that by by um, altering the altering this sort of information around around those parameters, but we'll have to we'll have to see see what exactly you actually want to do. Right, enough waffle from me. Let's uh, show you something else a bit more interesting. Right, 
imagine you've got a bank holiday Monday, right? A bank holiday Monday in the UK is like a weekend. All the kids are off school, so you don't. So you might want narrower opening hours on a Monday. Let's just alter this. You might want narrow opening hours. You might. Oh, it's quiet on a Monday. We're we're basically nearly closed. We're open at fifteen, and we shut at eight. This is just for an example. So we're open at three o'clock in the afternoon. We shut at eight. Let's just show you that that works. All right. 1500 and we shut it at 8. Right, but we've got a bank holiday Monday coming up. So, Monday the 25th of May, I'm going to put it in as a bank holiday. So, we're going to use opening time override. We're going to um, put in Monday 25th of May, and we're going to put open time in at uh, 7 in the morning and I'm going to put close time in at 9 o'clock at night and I'm going to set it active so you can plan everything and if it's not set active then uh, then and press insert alright so you see that second row's coming now ignore the top one top one's just more playing about it's not even active look so, um, on 25th of May now, we're now open from 7 till 9. So, if I press that, see how that's changed now. That's overridden the um, the original opening hours and made us open till uh, 7 in the morning till 8 at night. So, how flexible is that? that? That is absolutely stunning. Suddenly, your park is now open for an extended period of time due to um, opening hours and things changing. So, brilliant, yeah? Right. So, let's have a look at close times. So that's opening hours override. Right, the way that this works is close times are always processed first, then opening hours override um, is, is processed, and then, oh, then it defaults back to opening hours. So, if we set the 25th, you closed on the 25th of May. And you open back on the 26th, uh, reason, maintenance, uh, now closed for wedding say, insert, uh, not that you would ever be closed for a wedding, there you go look, closed for wedding and there's no book icon gone on, so it still recognised that you had 7 till uh, 9 selected, but it's marked it as close for wedding. So, and that can work across uh, as many days as what you want it to work across. Um, so, so if I change the, that to be, um, imagine that uh, Christmas is coming. December 25th. Um, and we should, we're having a bit of an extended period. So we, we oops, I think it's December. All in a demo. So we're having a bit of an extended shut. So we we shut on Christmas Day, Boxing Day, back open on twenty seventh. So that is active. Insert. Uh, a reason is required. Um, closed for Christmas. Right, I just had a thought, but I don't allow bookings right away up to Christmas. No, I don't. Oh dear. Let's just uh, show you that. I've just, uh, I forgot about, and uh, I've limited the system. I do apologise. Let's go back to May. Right, so, uh, 29th to... Uh, Thirtieth of May. Just, do, just imagine that was Christmas. I limited um, how far you can book in front. That's why um, that happened. Um, which fifth? Right. Let's go on to uh, the twenty ninth. 
clubs for Christmas log. Let's go on the um, June 30th back available. If I altered that to be then another day, the 30th will also be closed. Right, um, 30th of May. Close for Christmas. Well, ignore that it's May and it's closed for Christmas. It's just an example. But you get the idea. And if you're not happy with that, you can just press delete. Just press delete. So, and there you go. System's back. So if I press that again, space is back available on the 30th. See how quick it is? See how quick it takes? It's, it's, um, it's all pretty good. Right, so that's opening hours, override, close times. So now we're on party hours. Right, right party hours are, um, works exactly the same as opening hours, really. It's just uh, for each day of the week, uh, what time's your first party, what time's your last party. So um, in this system, uh, parties are uh, an hour and 45 minutes. So um, the party is uh, the first party um, trampoline park jump in starts at five goes on to six and then uh, uh, it's 45 minutes in the party room and then 15 minutes tidy up for the next party so so basically um, if you have a party then it, it closes it to um, uh, two hours after seven so nine o'clock so you have to if if for whatever reason you alter the opening times this and it and there's not enough room for the last party it won't show the last party in in the actual um uh, system as well because the closing cause you're closed so you've got to be, just be a bit uh, careful this also looks at the closing times as well um uh, for party hours anyway it's enough waffle i'll show you so that's on a Saturday. So on a Saturday, his first party is at ten, and his last party is at six. So last party is at six, right? Let's edit that. First party is at um, first party is at uh, nine. You have to do them in two hours increments as well. Um, this will this will show you. So I got nine, eleven, three, five, seven. It's done it at seven because it's it knows everything's in two hours. So even though you put your last party in at six, it has to take it up from the start party. Uh, time so it's quite um, it's quite clever at working itself around um, so you just got to be aware of the flexibility I can't make it a hundred percent you know improve um, for everything but uh, it's pretty good right party hours override this works the same as um, if I just go back to party hours Let's pick a let's pick a Monday. Normally parties are five while seven. Again using the bank holiday scenario. Um we're going to alter the party on the Monday. And we're going the first party is going to be at uh, ten o'clock in the morning. The last party is going to be at uh, seven o'clock. Active. Won't uh, actually be used unless it's marked as active. Press insert, rows in. Let's have a look. Refresh that for the 25th. Change date. So the first part is now at 10 o'clock in the morning. The last party is at 6 o'clock. We must have got some close times in. So that's it. That shows you exactly how quick it is to do. So, special offers. Right. This can be used in two ways. This can be used to actually put an, some offer text up on these screens and alter your actual pricing. So, our, um, 
So for instance, on the 22nd of May, which is in the past, and from 14th to 22nd of May, which is in the past, so I'll create a new one, um, it had a bumper offer on. So let's put, oops, pressed insert too early. As you, as you never, not showing you an error yet, but it shows you that uh, um, uh, all this information is actually required. So it's got error checking as you're trying to edit stuff. Start you making a mistake, including putting dates in in the wrong order or end date before start date and various things like that. So um, anyway, let's let's put some times in. So on the um, twenty fifth. I'm going to have um, all the way through and 25th. So from midnight, 25th till 11 o'clock, we're going to have a uh, fab offer. Prices are going to be cheaper, it's going to be uh, a pound. Right, just run out a little bit of room a bit. So I'm just going to open that window. Normally, you don't try and run it in something super small. Party price is going to be, we'll make that party price £2. Socks are going to be £1.50. It is marked as a special offer, I'll show you the difference in that in a minute. And we'll mark it as active and then we'll press insert. So that's put that on. So on the 25th of May, we're going to have a, um, some uh, a bumper fab offer. So press that. See now we've got fab offer appeared on every slot. The text um, shows yet, so that's on the party. And the party price was um, two pounds. So I'm just going to prove that. Party price, two pounds. Shows you 20 already, so the minimum price of 10. And to 11, automatically sums it up. Um, but we're going to show you the prices for the normal booking. Oops, normal session. It uh, shows your fab offer room underneath, and the normal price was a pound each. So we click on them, a pound each, non slip socks, £1.50. So you can see there, that's basically altered the pricing. Right, slight change on this. Press edit there, look. It's just so that you could increase your pricing during busier peak periods. Say it's a bank holiday and you wanted to make a little bit more money and without anybody really realizing you could press special offer off you could make that three pounds toddler two pounds fifty party six pounds socks two pound fifty obviously you need to think about this for your normal pricing but this is just an example this time the word fab offer doesn't show but when you click through to go to your bookings, your prices increase. So, that's uh, uh, Monday 25th. Oops. Our, um, change date. Book. So you see now your prices have increased. But uh, if I go back there, there's no, there's no offer. So we said that... Um, Prices for standard were going to be three pound. Prices for toddler two pound fifty. Prices for socks uh, two pound fifty. And party is going to be six pounds. So three pound, two pound fifty, two pound fifty, and um, parties six pound. So you see, that's just quite quickly altered it all for you. So that's effectively everything that's in the admin area. So that's quite cool, I'm sure you'll agree, quite flexible, allows you to manage and be open whenever you need to be. Okay then, thank you for watching this video. Thanks, goodbye. Oh, by the way, our, um, the first video is here on the actual uh, front screen of the actual website and the admin video is going to be going here on the demo version. If you want to try just booking, you can't get into the admin area on, your, on yourself because you can't have loads of people changing the system. But if you want to try booking, then uh, um, then just go to trampolinepark.socialbuild.co.uk and have a go at booking some sessions. Okay then, thank you very much. Goodbye.